past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty, hello, hello everybody. This is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Izuku and Melissa Shield. Now, Izuku, he has gone to, well, with Melissa to the Hero Agency. The pro heroes are currently getting together and strategizing on a way to take down Shigaraki. That villain lost an arm in their battle, and he put the shield maiden in the hospital. The first time she's ever been that injured. Now, along with that, Midoriya, he's basically told the Hero Association to pile on with an attack. Right now, Shigaraki, he is basically, in a way to put it easily, dazed and confused. He's still trying to recover from what happened just the day before. And if they can take him down now and not give him an opportunity, they can get him while he is weak. Now, Midori has basically given this plan to the Hero Association. Call him out once again and basically redo what happened the first time. However, they have new information they can use. Heroes, they are... yeah, that's a good idea. Others, they're more or less cautious of this. If they do the same thing again, the guy, he'll figure it out. He can't be that stupid. Now, we do cut to outside of the hero building, where Izuku is trying to use a phone. And the dragon hero Ryuku, she did sit down to give Midoriya a hand. Her basically explaining that this is how you do this on the phone. This is how you do this. This is how you do this. Ah, I see. This device still is hard to understand, even after all the time I've been around technology. Hmm? Really? You, you're you not used to tech? Ah, no. I am not. Actually, this is, well, basically magic to me. <laughs> well, that's an odd way to put it. Hmm? Is it really? Well, yeah. This tech isn't really that impressive, really. Even the phone itself is an older model. I think it came out a few years back. Ah, I see. Where you're from, you don't have tech like this, do you? No, we do not. Where are you from, if I can ask you that? Your Japanese isn't too bad, actually. However, it's the way you're pronouncing certain things. You're using more complex words. Instead of simplified versions. Hmm, I see. I do not wish to inform you of that. However, if I am to give information, I am the one who's trained the Sword Maiden. Hmm? Really? That young woman. She's impressive. You trained her? Ah, uh, yes I did. In fact, I've instilled in that young woman everything I know. My tutelage, my knowledge, and how to harness her power properly. Wow. As far as I heard, I thought she was a normal girl. Then again, she's the hero who doesn't bleed. So, there's a lot to learn there. 
Ah, yes. In fact, well, well, I'm going to be honest. Hmm? You wish to speak your mind? Speak, please. Well, okay then. Pro heroes, a lot of them are on the fence about your plan. Many of them don't want to die. That's understandable. There's obviously going to be resistance. However, if we execute the plan properly, no one will die. Yeah, that's just it. Plans rarely ever go accordingly. You're aware, right? Yes, I am aware. However, that is a sacrifice that you put your lives on every day, is it not? Hmm? What? <clears throat> to try and put it in a way you understand. You are a pro hero and you risk your life every single day to make sure people are safe, correct? Y yes. Yeah. One day, your life could be snuffed out in an instant. Is that wrong? Well, I mean... Ryuku, thinking about how, bluntly, Midoriya talks about death. Well, I... mean... it's scary. Yes, the battlefield is quite a dangerous place. For everyone. However, that is war. That is what a fight is. In fact, if I had to say anything about it, I believe you would understand. Yeah, war is hell. Now, what I would watch as Ryuku, she has somewhat slump forwards. And she has started to think about all the villains she's ever faced. Now, you do have Midori who does go to put the phone in his pocket, as he does tell Ryuku that her statement is false. Hmm? What? Her turning to look at Midoriya, who does go to stand up onto his feet, before going to stretch, telling her that war is war, and hell is hell. Does she know the difference? Uh, no. Not really, if you're putting it that way. Ah. Explanation. What is there in war? And what is there in hell? Um. People. Yes, but what types? Um. Um, I don't know. In war, there are innocent people. And in hell, no one is innocent. Hell, everyone is guilty. Everyone is there for a specific reason and a purpose. They fight because of it. And they fight for dominance. However, in war, war is full of innocent men. It's full of children and women. I've seen it for myself. War can devastate families and cause many to simply disappear. So I will leave you with that statement and the difference. My, you sound like you speak from experience. I do. I've lost my father, my mother, and many others. In fact, I believe they're all long dead now. Even the woman I once fancied is dead. Oh, you're a widower? Hmm? No. Before me and her ever really were together, I made a brash decision, and it cost me my happiness, and eventually led to their deaths. Oh. Well, now, this would be whenever you do have Melissa, who she does come walking out of the Hero Association building, and she has Simadoria, who is talking with Ryuku. Now, 
Midoriya? Yeah. As he does turn around, he does see Melissa, who does come walking out as she does comment on who is sitting there with him. Hmm? Hey, Izuku, why are you sitting here with Ryukyu? Hmm? Ah, she was teaching me how to use the phone. Oh, I thought you were good. Hmm. Not necessarily. In fact, I'm still troubled by it. Ha. Huh. All right, old man. Well, we gotta go. Hmm. Quite. Um, excuse me. Now, Momo would look in Ryuku's direction. Uh, he can't be that old, can he? Oh, uh, sorry. It's just what I call him. He's like a father to me. Oh, that's good. No. Midoriya? Yeah. He does go to leave with Melissa. As he does leave the dragon hero with a few words. He's heard of her before. And he knows the dedication and code she does live her life by. It is a very respectable code. However, she does need to know when to diverge from it. Now, the dragon hero does give Midoriya some advice, since Midoriya, he did help to put some of her thoughts to rest. Now, she does tell Midoriya that people are going to fight against Midoriya's whole plan, and if possible, he needs to backtrack a bit. Heroes will patrol for Shigaragi. They can do that part. And that's at least what her hero association can get started on. If she does it, then many other associations will do and follow. However, trying to call the guy out, that will cause trouble. So, for right now, let's all make a plan. While well, looking for him. Now, Midoriya, he does smile and leave. As Ryuku, she herself does make a few phone calls along with Melissa's Hero Association doing the exact same. Now, there is one of her Melissa she does get back home with Izuku. And she does ask him a few things. Asking about what he plans to do. Hmm. That is simple. This villain will not come out easily. Of course, he can, but if we do that, then pros, yes. They'll be demoralized, and they'll be less interested in taking him down. Since many of them will believe they will just be going to the grinder. Oh, ah, uh, pretty blunt there, aren't you? Not at all. No. As Miss Ryuku stated, pros will be on patrol for him, meaning they're actively searching. So. I believe that you should keep in contact with Miria, Tamaki, and Nedre. Hmm? Uh, okay, but why? Is something up? Not entirely. We need to take Excalibur back to my homeland, remember? Uh, really? Yeah, I know, but right now? Yes. That blade is the only one that can match up to Clarence Strikes. Clarence did take it down. However, it's because of the amount of bloodshed that's been currently shed by it. In the past millennia since I've disappeared. And, if possible, you can even get it imbued with more power. What? Yes. That sword is meant to be unstoppable by the wielder. However, they have to give their heroic spirit to it. Imbue it with their blood. Okay, and? Is, is that all? Nah. It's not at all close. The sword forging process will take a long time. However, many of my... Friends, who I believe to still be alive today, 
they might be able to help us. Under normal circumstances, this would take months. However, while we are over there, I can show you and train you. Along with that, you can even begin to learn specialized skills the elves have. They do have some warriors, last time I remember. Hmm. That feels like millennia ago. Anyways. Now. Midoriya? Yeah. Him and Melissa do pack their bags. And Melissa, she does leave her hero association in the hands of some of her sidekicks. Now. The two do head to Ireland. And we do have whenever Midoriya? Yeah. He does currently stand at the site where he was fallen. And he does look down at the rock where Melissa, she did, pull the sword from the stone. Ah, this takes me back. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Whoever thought we'd be here again? I don't know. However... I do think back on it. The life that I took. What? Yes. Shortly before I was sealed in my sword, I killed a man. Oh. That's not... The man killed my father. And he ordered an assassin to do it. He then in... Well, in fact, wanted to invade my nation. So, I killed him. I came here on a one-man killing spree. No one could hold up to me. In fact, it does seem to be quite estranged. Now that I do think about it. Now, Melissa does watch Midoriya's facial expression. Midoriya, he doesn't sound happy or energized saying those statements. In fact, Midoriya sounds like he's lamenting on it, and that he does feel guilt for it. However, she does have to think. This is a guy from so far ago in the past. Everything he's looking at is blowing his mind. She watched this guy flip his shit over a bag of chips once. And that wasn't even scratching the surface. Now, Melissa does try to think, as she does ask Midoriya we are, where they are going to head to next. As we do have where Midoriya, he does look upon the ruins of his enemy's castle. And he does look in a direction. Before, he does bring up his hand and point that way. As the two do get into a vehicle, or the car they took to get here, after they've gone through everything, they begin to drive. Midoriya watching Melissa, as he does look around the strange vehicle, and comment that riding in one feels a lot different as a person. Now, the two do eventually get to Midoriya's former home. And from then on, Midoriya would instruct her as to where to go. As the two do have to get out of the vehicle, and they do have the weapon. Now, eventually Midoriya, he does come upon a lake. And Melissa, she is intrigued looking at it. Hmm. Whoa. So, this is it? Now. Midori, he does say yes, before he does look around. And he walks over and picks a plant. Before, he does reach down and grab a handful of gravel. Now, Melissa does look at Midori as he does do this. As Midori, he does imbue both of these things with heroic spirit before, balling his hands together and beginning to grind them up in his hands. Now, Melissa is confused. However, Midoriya, he does do this with immense amounts of strength. Before, Midoriya, he does open his hand to, uh, well, 
having fine powder in it. Walking back over in front of Melissa, as Midoriya he does hold up his hand and ask Melissa if he can please have the weapon. Uh, sure. No. Midoriya he does take the weapon. And he does imbue it with his heroic power. Before Midoriya he does hold the weapon directly in front of him and begin to say a few things that Melissa does not understand. Before Midoriya he does go to take a deep breath in and he does blow out the dust over the water. Melissa watching as the dust, it flies out blue and purple. As it does quickly begin to cover the surface. Now, as it does happen, Melissa does watch the water begin to emanate a strange glow before a bright flash. And Midoriya, as he does walk forwards, Melissa does have to unshield her eyes and then unshield them, watching to see as a platform does currently form in the water. And there is a large door she does not recognize. Now, she does go running after Midoriya since she is confused as hell as to what is going on. And we do have where Midori, he does walk through the door. Melissa right behind him. As the two are greeted by a large amount of men in armor with spears. As that many of them do ask him to state his business and how he knows to get here. Since that entrance has been sealed off for centuries. Now, Midoriya, he does state his name, talking about how he is King Arthur and he does currently hold Excalibur with him, and he does face a grave threat. Now, many of them don't believe him, as Midoriya, he does hold up the broken blade and show them all to see, as he does let loose his heroic spirits. Now, all these men are trained in this power, and they feel the pressure Midori does give off. Many of them dropping to their knees and bowing to King Arthur. As Midori he does ask to go and see him naming a blacksmith by name. As they are off. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing day. Catch you guys in the next part.